everyone, today I'll present the paper What Design Data Say About Your Model, which is a case study on reliability and validity. This paper was possible due to the contributions of the following authors at the School of Interactive Arts and Technology in Simon Fraser University. I will be your speaker, Osama. Looking at parametric models, we can study them as computer programs, and the activities that build them are akin or similar to composing a program. While graph-based parametric models share many similarities with imperative text-based programming, an important distinction arises from the fact that they make visual modeling possible using nodes and links, and they also have an execution model that adapts concurrency. Incorporating the performance metrics in design models from conceptual to the final stages of design has become a common practice. This approach aims to address performance-related design questions at the very early design stages. Architects use parametric modeling combined with various performance analysis software to influence form exploration at the very early stages, which lead to more informed, efficient, and meaningful solutions. It is essential, however, that these parametric models are reliable and perform as intended, and like computer programs, they must be tested for their reliability and validity, with a caveat that the testing method should be unique for design modeling. We define reliability as a criterion for determining if a given model performs without errors under changing conditions, and we define validity as a criterion for determining if a given model produces the expected outcomes. What we aim for is to have both. Reliability and validity can be affected by two main reasons. First, the complexity of the model intricate and changing structure, which increases parallel to the increase in the model's fidelity. Second is the complexity of the process through which such models are built, which increases with the involvement of different people and different expertise. So our research method here was the design analytics case study, where we conducted a case study demonstrating how the reliability and validity of our metric models can be tested in a realistic, collaborative design case, and how such design models can be improved using the insights gains from the interactive data visualizations. We refer to the combination of computational design and visual design analytics as design analytics. Now let's take a deep dive into this case study. It was based on our observation of the process and a close study of a collaborative parametric design setup developed in Smart Geometry, specifically inside the Black Box group, and it was done in 2018. This group comprised of 19 participants who were designers, programmers, and even visualization developers. The group worked on the design of a mixed-use high-rise building located in a city context with a range of real-world form and performance concerns. This diagram shows the case study setup, and the components within the red box to the left are the main setup, while the one on the right is our intervention. Now looking at each model, the first one is the parametric model that specifies and generates geometries, which is provided by the design teams. The second one is the input generator, which receives the parameters and changes the input values algorithmically to automate the serial generation of alternatives. Third is the context, which had information such as uh, site, view, geography that was provided uh, to the uh, parametric model. Also, third is the uh, performance uh, calcula calculation which is the most complex uh, component and it is composed of in-house developed or third-party modules linked to the context and parametric model components and finally we have the uh, spe dedicated speckle server that stores and retrieves performance data for each alternative which are further analyzed using commercial tools like Tableau and our custom design set of design analytics tools. So looking at the design alternatives, we used 250 of them and we generated them using six parametric models that were developed by different participants. The data associated with each alternative comprised of three things. First, the input parameters that used to generate it, and second, the form and ge the geometry, and finally, 
the 13 different performance values such as land use, functional spatial distribution, heat loss and gain, solar exposures, view quality, etc. So the data generated from this study was analyzed using a set of visualization tools. Through our open-ended analysis, we came across problems in the design models and categorized them as impacting reliability and validity of the design models. By doing so, we became more convinced of the utility of visualization in identifying validity and reliability problems. Next, we will discuss some few of the, these problems we found. First, here we have an unexpected correlation between the total floor area and the residential floor area. The total floor area here is the sum of the areas of the residential, commercial, and retail floors of a building. Hence, we expect a correlation between each of these and the total floor area. Instead, as we see in this figure, there is actually some values that do not follow this trend. Next, we have this graph of total area versus uh, energy use, which allowed experts in our team to recognize unexpected values, which hinted at possible problem uh, with the calculations. The nested modules calculating heat loss and heat gain of a building hit the logic and the data visualizations showed this unexpected result, which in turn implied that the model might be invalid. So in this case, uh, the correlation is negative, well it has to be positive because as the floor area increases, the energy use should also increase. Third here, this figure shows a scatter block of the cantilever area versus the height of alternatives. This visualization helps us discover that alternatives generated by the model K do not vary in height, while those generated by the model J do not vary in cantilever area. Contrary to what the designers intended, and this flagged a problem in both models. Next we have, when comparing view qualities of design alternatives, we notice that models with different shapes produce similar view quality values. <laughs> this led us to discover issue in the method used to calculate the view quality value. So for example, here these two models has the same view quality value, although that they are obviously different. Finally, in the input generator, which is the utility module for randomizing the generation process, we notice a discrepancy between the generated input values and the alternatives. A close inspection showed us that the generator module was making assumptions about the time that an alternative would take to, fully, to be fully computed and prematurely generated new input values. However, reliably generating alternatives requires ensuring that the propagation solver finished the computing of the current geometry before a new cycle starts. So to go one step further, after reflecting on those problems and finding common themes in them, we derived a set of lessons. These lessons are related to how these problems could be mitigated in the first place by changes to the design models or the design process. First, we have the use of multiple alternatives as data. When we work with a single design alternative at a time, we can only observe problems that the alternative reveals. Observing a pattern is obviously not possible unless we generate many alternatives and use a data visualization in which this pattern is visible. Second is the need for form and visualizations. The quantitative performance evaluations and design geometry present two different aspects of design, complementing each other. Computing design performances capture only a fraction of the criteria that might be in action, while the geometry at low fidelity can be misleading without further details. Second, we have matching input to performance module requirements. Before starting the geometry modeling process, the designer needs to be aware of the requirements and limitation of the performance module. In its simplest form, this can be ensuring that the input is formatted in the right data structure. Fourth, we have the using of multiple parametric models. The advantage of this is that we can challenge the performance module generality by subjecting it to different inputs. Fifth, we have the early involvement of experts. While it is possible for a correlation or pattern or an outlier to raise questions when observed in data, an expert still needed to for necessary and proper interpretation. Sixth is the repository of revisiting fast instances. 
In general, designers reproduce an alternative to revisit and reevaluate it against new or updated design. Achieving this requires retrieving both the input parameters and the model that was used to generate it. So in conclusion, what we observed was that performance calculation modules was embedded in uh, the design model, which increased the complexity and hence affected the model's reliability and validity. The computing time taken by the performance module in the models hindered the agility and the ride bit feedback of the design, sometimes taking between 5 and 30 seconds. We also observed that some of the software-specific issues when performing, uh, when calculating performance on one setup and another setup Finally, whenever we wanted to fix one performance calculation, we had to replicate it for each design model, which was uh, very unproductive. So what we proposed is a new collaborative design setup that decouples the design models from the performance evaluation modules and puts them in a separate cloud or server. The proposed setup also integrates interactive design data analysis into the process. The performance modules should be flexible enough to handle varying input conditions. So, as we demonstrated through this case study, interactive visualizations of design data can improve the reliability and validity of parametric modeling in calibrative design setting. Also, a bottleneck in achieving this parametric modeling and visual analytics are often the discrete workflows. And to elevate this bottleneck, we need further and more systematic studies for exploring how the integrations of these two workflows can be further achieved. This is our acknowledgement, and those are our references. Thank you so much for listening, and goodbye.